Hey guys, I'm Phil Town from Rule One Investing. Today, we're gonna to share some of my biggest stock market screw ups and what I learned from them. And hopefully that's gonna help you guys as we go forward into probably the biggest stock market opportunity of our lives. Well, you guys, while it's true that I've been very fortunate, I've had a good investing career, largely successful, uh, but there have certainly been failures along the way. Um, and I don't feel too bad about that. Even Warren Buffett makes mistakes from time to time. And uh, Warren makes a big deal out of, you know, putting those front and center in his annual reports. And I, I love reading his annual reports because reading those mistakes is some of the best education you can get. So I'm hoping in that tradition to kind of pass along some of my own screw ups, why I made them and kind of the valuable lessons they taught me. And I want you guys to use this as an opportunity to learn so that you can avoid those mistakes in the next few years, because I really think the opportunities coming in the next few years are going to be just absolutely life changing, both in terms of your own personal wealth and in terms of the generational wealth for your family. So um, hopefully this will help as I sort of bare my soul. I hate to do this, but I will. Um, all right. So uh, let's start with this. Um, let's see. I had a approximately $22 million mistake with Next Computer. Now, this one goes back all the way to the Steve Jobs days and working with Steve Jobs closely. Um, not that he wanted to, but he was sort of forced to because I'd invested in a small company that was building a document management system that is really even to this day it was way ahead of its time and um, based on a, 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 a relational database called Sybase and the company is being um, run by you know like the head the head engineer there and the head of the company is a, an engineer named Paley Wang who's Chinese and extremely brilliant and um, they just they needed capital and I just really started to understand what was going on with that business and the place they wanted to put it was on the next computer the next computer was Steve Jobs computer after he did the Macintosh and it was designed to be the most cutting-edge spectacular computer ever made for the desktop and indeed the engineers all truly love this computer um, and they built this fabulous document management system on it and Next Computer took that document management system in its beta form and started to sell their computers based on this incredible document management software that you could only do on the Next Computer. They sold $75 million worth of computers just based on that document management system. And the reason I know that is because Todd Rulon Miller called me up as the head of Next Sales and said that he talked to Paley Wang and Paley asked him to call me as their largest investor and to find out if I'd be willing to come out because my English was somewhat better than hers. Not a lot better, but somewhat and do the demonstrations for next computer when they were on their sales calls. And so I went out for months and I did sales calls with, you know, Shearson Lehman American Express up in the World Trade Center. And I did calls with the the uh, L.A. Sheriff's Department. I did calls with in institutional fund managers and with with uh, huge nuclear power stations and it was really fun i'd go out once every three or three weeks or so i'd make a sales call with these guys and i'd demo it so todd called me back up after two or three months of this and said hey steve jobs wants to meet you um, and have you do a demo for him of this software and so i went absolutely and i was real excited i flew in to uh, foster city went to the next headquarters and they put me in a room steve came down i, I said hello he said hello sat down he said okay let's see what you got and I started going through the demo and, you know, after two or three minutes, Steve said, let me let me see this. And he grabbed the mouse and grabbed one of the windows that I had up and moved it. And there was an identical window underneath it, with the exception of just a little data that was in one of the fields. And he looked at this and then he started pulling windows apart. It was all this huge stack of windows, which I had no idea. I mean, I was just doing the demo that the engineers had showed me how to do. And Steve got up and said, ran over to Todd Rulon Miller and we just stormed out of the room and Todd and Todd was just outside and he said if you ever let that son of a bitch back in this building I will have you fired and then he took off up the stairs and Todd Todd came in and said what just happened and I looked at Todd and I'm like what just happened and he said I don't know but I'm gonna find out don't leave town so I went to a hotel 
Oh my gosh. And that night he called me up and said, well, Steve thought it was vaporware. He thought it was a fake demo and he's talked to the engineers. They said, no, they just, they had to fake a demo because you are such a technological klutz that they couldn't give you the real real stuff or you'd break it. And, and they gave you a fake demo because you know, you could do it. So I just went, okay, well, what's, what's next? And he said, well, Steve wants to talk to you again. I said, well, I hope he's going to apologize because that was horrible. And he said, nah, probably not. So I show up the next morning, Steve grabs me and we, I get no apology. What I get is a 45 minute walk out with the very famous Steve Jobs and where he proceeded to bring me into the extremely famous Steve Jobs, you know, force field where you sort of fall under his spell. And not only did he like say, we're going to, you know, this is going to be good software, but he said, I hate the interface and you're going to pay to change it. And long story short, I had to come up with the capital, bring this entire team out, put them up for a month in San Francisco while they fix this interface to Steve's personal satisfaction. And it ultimately shipped and it was, it was really good, except for one thing. I put this software, or the engineers did, on a computer system that wasn't well established. And the next computer, after all of that, the next computer failed. It failed. It collapsed. The whole company went away. Apple computer bought the next technology and that's now what's on the Mac and why it's so amazing. It's got the, the, uh, old next technology on it. And I had to move that company over to a platform it wasn't built for. And ultimately I sold the company, but the sale, I had already pre-sold this thing to a company called frame technologies for 20 four or 25 million and the wholesale went away. I ended up selling the whole thing for about $2 million to a company in England. Really bad idea to put, put your future on a platform that isn't established. So one of the rules that came out of that is make sure there's 10 years of data there. Make sure you've got this long history. So you know that the company you're dependent on, whether it's the software itself or the computer it's going to run on, that you'll know that that is in fact a long-term investment. It's going to be around for at least 10 years. So that's number one thing. Now, the next thing is, uh, and that would cost me. All right. Next thing is that, uh, those of you who've been following me for a while know that I got into Chipotle back in 2009, got in at 55 bucks, sold out about 500 and something, and it went to $760 without me which is sometimes happens because you get out when, when it's over, over the reasonable intrinsic value. And sometimes the market just keeps putting it up there. All right. So fair enough. Still did well. All right. So this time, having learned that lesson this time, as you know, I bought into Chipotle at about $280 a share and it took off and went up to 500 bucks where I closed out the sale again at around 500. <laughs> and this time it didn't stop at 760. No, it went to a thousand dollars a share without me along for the ride. All right. And in this latest market crash, the stock dropped like a brick all the way down to 500, almost 500 bucks. And I was sitting there ready to pounce at $400. I had sold puts at 400. I'm all in at 400. I'm not even going to wait for 300. I'm learned my lesson and it turned around and it's already run up. I don't even know what it is. I can't bear looking at it. It took off without me again. So the lesson there, is don't be in a hurry to unload a company that you already know the market is going to put a very high value on once the problems go away. Go ahead and ride along with it. You don't have to get out of there unless you got some other place to put the money. I would have, uh, instead of just doubling my money, I would have, you know, doubled it twice. So that was painful. All right. And the third one, probably the most painful lesson of all is about debt and about management with debt. You've got to pray that the management team that you're working with is, is talented and also has integrity. It's the integrity of the management team that's sometimes really difficult to, to kind of figure out because integrity and values are not something that are learned under pressure. You learn them, you build a habit away from the pressure, and then those are revealed or, you know, you, you show who you are 
under pressure. And unfortunately, management teams that haven't been tested under a lot of pressure, you don't really know for sure how they're going to react. And so this is why debt is so deadly in an investment under circumstances like we're going into, where the future revenue streams may be very challenged for a number of years for a lot of these companies. If they have debt and can't pay it, often the management team can behave in really bad ways. Instead of selling off, let's take, for example, if you have a real estate company, you have a lot of different pieces of real estate and a lot of debt. Um, one management team, as it gets into trouble, you know, the, the shopping centers are empty. That company gets ahead of the curve because they have integrity and talent and they sell off one shopping center after another. Maybe they don't get a very good price, but they're staying liquid. They're keeping cash in the bank and they're reducing their debt as they go to stay away from an overall problem where they might not be able to pay the debt. And if that happens, then the bank can put you into foreclosure, just like with mortgages. The bank can put you in foreclosure. It's called a chapter 11 bankruptcy. And when that happens, the shareholders lose everything off almost every time. So with this horsehead company, what happened was the management team were a not talented and B without integrity. And I'm saying that straight up and they can look me right in the eye and I'll tell it to them. I've already done that. And we're going after him and we're just going to try to take him down if, if we can. We're still in court over it. Um, and this was years and years ago. But what they did is they had three different companies under one umbrella. And one of those companies was the future. And it got into trouble with some construction and they started adding debt. And it didn't really hit me that this debt could be terminal. And the debt got into trouble because they didn't get the plant built in time. And instead of selling off the other companies and eliminating the debt, they held the whole package together and took it into Chapter 11 bankruptcy like this. And literally two weeks after telling everybody everything's fine. And my God, we fought that in court for nine months. And ultimately, the judge agreed with us. Yes, you got screwed. Uh, this was obviously a very valuable company. Um, unfortunately, the bankruptcy proceedings have eaten up all of the equity that I think was in the company on a conservative view, and you get nothing, which left us he said, the doors open, you can sue those guys over there. So there's another lesson when when debts being added, if it wasn't there already debts being added, be careful. So debt is being added to a lot of companies out there right now. I want you guys to be very careful to be aware that that added debt that added debt could take them ultimately to a point of desperation. And if they're not moral leaders, if they're a bunch of bastards, they could take that into chapter 11, even though they could have sold off stuff and gotten away without it. So be very careful out there, you guys. I want you to just make sure that you're really tracking. Be sure you get a good education and answer this question. Put some comments down here. Have you ever made an investment that you just shouldn't have and it didn't work out? Let's see what you did about it. All right. So leave a comment below and uh, I'll be sure to follow up with you guys. Now, time to go play. See ya. You guys, if you enjoyed this video and you think it was valuable in teaching you more about, you know, my investing mistakes or things you should avoid, hit the like button and please share this video with your friends. And if you want more investing content, just subscribe to my channel. We got a ton of great videos there. And don't forget to click the button on the screen. We got a free gift for you. Thanks again for watching.